Since arriving to Orlando, we've heard from general manager Adam Peters, head coach Dan Quinn, and now it is time for managing partner Josh Harris coming up on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. And from there, you'll have one-on-one conversations with me via text message. No hashtags, no apps, no filters, none of that, just bonus content inside information, news analysis, and conversation with me. Go, go Again, go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders to get in on that fun. Today, I'm David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for commandercountry.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. And everydayers, as always, I can appreciate your continued support for the program. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. On today's episode, you are going to be hearing from managing partner Josh Harris on numerous items. And we're going to start off with his thoughts following his first annual league meeting for the NFL, the progress of the team, how things have gone so far with Dan Quinn and Adam Peters, and his thoughts on the new kickoff rule changes that we discussed yesterday, along with his 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 perception of what's the difference between being an NFL owner and being an owner in the NBA and NHL, where, of course, he has uh, also uh, got ventures in. So here is managing partner Josh Harris. How are you today? Doing great. How are you? How are the meetings going? Meetings are going great. You know, we uh, said my first uh, annual meetings in the NFL, they were um, super productive, uh, a lot of hard work done, and uh, as, you, as you all know, some changes, but uh, generally... Um, it's good to see uh, the um, power of the brand and what's happening out there and, you know, kind of how much consumers are excited about watching games and great, glad, glad to be part of it. And obviously we got some stuff done ourselves. So. Yeah, I mean, for the team, you guys have been so busy since January. Um, how do you feel like things have progressed since, you know, hiring Adam, <laughs> hiring Dan, free agency? Yeah, look, we're all drinking from a fire hose, obviously, but, um, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity that uh, to, uh, bring, to start with, a bl- in essence, somewhat of a blank state, slate to bring together a new coach, new GM, new front office, new ownership, obviously, and uh, to, uh, and that was really exciting. And so you saw the coaches that joined, you saw, you know, how we did in free agency and now on to the draft. So I think we're, uh, we're building and it's exciting. How have you liked about how the process has worked for free agency draft prep and everything that's gone on since these hires have been made? <clears throat> yeah, I think it's been um, uh, super thorough, um, and the amount of work that's done is incredible. But uh, you saw the number of moves we made in free agency. They were all uh, pretty intelligent. I mean, I think we were – obviously, we had a lot of needs. Uh, and so – we were, um, you know, we were smart about how we spent, you know, a lot of our uh, free agents, our cap space. And, uh, and so, and we took, I think we tried to take the pressure off the draft so that we could, you know, really go for those people that, those players that are high ceiling. So I think that we're, I think we're in, I think we're in a very good position to take advantage of, you know, obviously a lot of draft capital. Hey Josh, um, late arrival here was talking to somebody else on the other side. <laughs> Roger, but it's okay. Um, how did you how did you fall on the kickoff uh, proposal? Did you have to come in and be sold, or did you come in pretty much thinking that that was something you would support? <clears throat> yeah, we, we we supported the proposal. I mean, obviously, uh, you want to weigh um, player safety, uh, but at, at the same time, uh, fan experience and. We felt that the uh, league and the committee had done a good job um, reconciling both those things in terms of this new approach, which obviously changes the dynamic of how the kickoff uh, occurs in terms of you know how fast someone might be running. But at the same time, uh, you know there weren't a lot of kickoff returns, right? And that was a very exciting part of the game. So for me, 
um, I came into it saying, um, I always think about things like it's about the fans in the context of player safety, and I felt this um, threaded the needle nicely, and I thought I was, I was supportive of it. I'll follow up to that. I'll follow up to that. Um, when you think about Roger Goodell, throughout your, your whole process of buying the team to, to now, what have you learned about him and his leadership style? Yeah, look, I think the league does an amazing job. This is, um, you know, the league uh, and the brand and the consumer interest and 93 out of the top 100 shows being NFL games um, and the excitement around the Super Bowl, that doesn't happen by accident. This is a league that is, um, you know, doing an amazing job and, um, you know, obviously having sat through hours and hours and hours of meetings, it comes with a lot of uh, hard work, uh, and and you see the people. Um, you know, Rogers. I've always I've known Roger for a while, and I've always studied an amazing job. But I've had a chance to see is all the great people underneath him now. And it's it's a it's a very uh, experienced, um, energetic team that has ambitious goals for um, the sport. Josh, you're well known. Go ahead, David. How does NFL ownership compare to the other leagues you've been involved in? Um, you know, it's, um, it's bigger. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, a lot of the fundamentals are the same in terms of, um, you know, kind of how you, being a steward for a city, um, trying to uh, engage, you know, a small um, community of players and coaches and front office executives and build like the best uh, on, uh, on court, on field experience or, you know, on ice. Uh, but, um, you know, just the media attention on the NFL is larger. Uh, it's a larger game. And so uh, there's probably a little more scrutiny. Uh, but, um, you know, I think that you're also able to impact, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot more people. I mean, obviously the games are bigger. Uh, the rosters are bigger. So it's just a little more complicated. The main portion of our conversation with managing partner Josh Harris really focused in on the new stadium on the upgrades to the current stadium and practice facilities. And it was a lot of information that Josh told us and talked to us about. So that is coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. And this episode is brought to you by Game Time, who is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They've got last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time literally takes the guesswork out of buying tickets with their deals, their flash deals, their zone deals. It's easy for you to find tickets to anything going on in your area. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase and game time has deals right up to the start of most events, even an hour after some of them begin. It's the place for you to find last minute seats and the game time guarantee means you're always going to get the best price because if you find tickets for the same event in the same section and row for less money, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create your account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N for $20 off, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Continuing now with today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listener, your first view today and every day. Every day is come back tomorrow. We're going to be kind of wrapping up the week here. We got a little bit more from Dan Quinn that I want to share with you. A lot of good stuff that Coach uh, was able to talk to us about. And I got a couple other members of the beat coming through to kind of share some of their impressions, uh, including Ben Standig of The Athletic, who we're talking to this offseason for the first time on the program. So come back for that. In the meantime, if you're watching Fox Sports and ESPN on your television all day, have you noticed that sometimes you got to turn it down while all the shouting begins? Well, if you make the switch to Locked On Sports today, you can forget all that. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinion, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or for free on the Amazon Fire TV channel app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Day. More from our conversation with managing partner Josh Harris. This time, he's talking about the RFK Stadium site, the politics going on with that, new stadium developments, NFLPA survey reactions, practice facility upgrades, current stadium upgrades, and, well, pretty much everything going on with stadiums. So that's coming up. Let's bring Josh Harris back into the conversation. Um, the commissioner was just asked about the RFK Stadium site by 
the young man right there. Uh, where you, where, where, where do things, Thank you all. <laughs> where do things stand for you right now in that process? Obviously, you, as you stated, you've been busy, but where do, where do things kind of stand for you? Yeah, look, we've been focused uh, on the stadium. Obviously, you saw the eighty-six million dollar announcement of uh, what we're doing with, uh, you know, with FedEx Field. Uh, but um, now we're also focused on our new home, and so in that regard, we're, you know, we're in pretty deep. Uh, we're doing site plans across three jurisdictions. We're in deep discussion with Maryland, but at the same time, we're uh, continuing to uh, pursue, um, you know, the possibility of having a site at RFK, and you know, the, that process is a political process. So uh, the first thing that has to happen is DC has to have the rights to the RFK land. Um, and they, uh, the, the, the House agreed to that in a bipartisan vote, but now uh, we need the Senate to act and the President to sign that bill, and then we can really start to have discussions with D.C. And so that's, that's what, uh, we've made some progress there, obviously, but we need to make more. What does deep discussions look like with Maryland? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, each jurisdiction wants us there, right? So um, ultimately, um, it's about, um, you know, kind of establishing really how we might have a dialogue. And that starts with, um, you know, us having kind of a view on what we would do uh, and um, and sort of looking at an overall, you know, master plan, an overall site plan. And so that's where we are right now. With regards to... I don't know, I'm sure you're paying attention to the Wizards and Capitals arena discussion. How much has that been <clears throat> factored into as you're thinking about it? Because obviously, depending on where that lands, could impact possibly what happens with your stadium. Of course. I mean, obviously, we're you know super focused on that. But uh, Ted, um, you know, and the and Monument Sports is doing what they think is the right thing for their franchise. Uh, we're certainly watching it and you know uh, looking at it and learning from it and. Uh, but, but there's not a lot we can do to affect that process, so we're a little bit removed from it. But, but, but clearly, you know, what happens there could have implications, so we're following it, and uh, we wish them well. Would you begin negotiations with D.C. before the political process plays out, or how, how would that work? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that right now everyone's just focused. I think D.C. first has to get uh, the uh, rights to utilize the land, and they have to figure out you know, what they want to do with it, right? And um, each, as, as you know, the process that you talked about illustrates, right, the first step in doing anything is once we have uh, an overall approach would be to have a dialogue with the city uh, or the jurisdiction about uh, how people feel about it. Uh, and, um, and so, uh, you know, the, obviously the process uh, is <coughs> underscored in what's happening uh, with Monument, but um, I think they need to go through that process first before we have a lot of dialogue with them. Obviously, the stadium is a pressing issue, but what about the practice facility and just, you know, remodeling it or, or looking for something new? I, I'm sure you saw that NFLPA report card, and that had to be kind of troubling. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not an F-minus guy, so <laughs> I don't know you could get an F-minus. <laughs> Uh, I, I look. I, obviously, we're, we've jumped all over that. I mean, first of all, that report um, was based on interviews that occurred, you know, right around the ownership change. So, but having said that, like it, it's clearly something that we're focused on. And in fact, um, you know, Adam and Dan uh, had to leave the uh, NFL meetings briefly to go have a discussion uh, with uh, architects uh, that are. We're, we're trying to uh, make a lot of changes there quickly, and obviously it starts with the, the NFL player uh, community is a small community, the NFL coaching community is a small community. You want to be a place that everyone says, that's a great place to be, uh, and therefore we need to um, upgrade that facility, and we are upgrading that facility, and it's, there's only so much you can do prior. You know, obviously we have to look at, okay, how much can we do? It's a lot like the situation we were in when we took over um, at um, in July, last July, like there's only so much you can do by the start of the season. There's only so much we can do by the start of training camp and we're gonna do that. And it's gonna be about the player experience, the player lounge, refinishing, you know, a bunch of things. But we have a lot more planned in terms of looking at the playing service itself, um, looking at the locker room, looking at, you know, the, the bathroom facility. So everything we can do right now to make uh, our players feel great about coming to work, feel comfortable, feel well taken care of, we're going to do. What, Go ahead. What's a realistic timetable to build a new one then, a practice facility? A new practice facility? 
Um, you know, a lot of that is going to depend on, uh, you know, what happens with the stadium to a certain extent. So I think like right now, that's the way that we're thinking about it is overall plan. You have three, you know, obviously the DMB is an overall area, right? And you kind of want to look at it pretty holistically. Is keeping that together then something you would prefer or do you want them to be separate, the practice facility and the stadium? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we've really thought about it. I don't... I don't think the, um, you know, the two necessarily have to be in the same place. I mean, I think it works kind of, it works fine. Um, you know, so, and especially when you have three jurisdictions, you know, obviously you want to think about, you know, what the, what's the best thing to engage the whole community. And for the current stadium plans and the approval of the budget just, that just went through that you just mentioned, what are some of those plans? What does it look like on a game day for fans going forward to upgrade and enhance the current Stadium. Well, I mean, I, look, this is a, uh, you know, I don't know, close to a 25 to 30 year old stadium, right? So uh, when stadiums were built back then, um, they didn't um, have the kind of um, premium and fan experience that you do today. Um, they were, a lot of the stadiums, uh, the, the sight lines to the game are further away. Um, certainly the, um, you know, the ability to use device, digital, tr there's been a digital transformation since then. Uh, the way uh, fans watch games is, is a lot better. It's a lot closer. You can see better. Uh, the premium experience is better. So, um, you know, obviously the ingress and egress is more difficult uh, than it has to be. So there's a lot of things, you know, the finishing. So there's a lot of things that are going to change if we build a new stadium for sure. Of course, no conversation about the Washington Commanders could be complete without the quarterback position. And Josh Harris was asked about the quarterback position. He was also asked about Eugene Shen. So we'll hear from him about that. Coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game in the NCAA tournament. And this episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by FanDuel. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers, you get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, whatever you want. You can even bet on who's going to win it all straight up. The UConn men. Are the favorites in the in the men's tournament still alive? The South Carolina women are the favorites in the women's tournament, and both are still alive. So you put five dollars on their next games in the Sweet 16. If they move on, you win as well. You get the two hundred dollars in bonus bets. If you want to wait for the end of the NFL season, that's yet to begin. The San Francisco 49ers are still favorites to win Super Bowl 59. The Chiefs are second favorites, or you can bet on the matchup. Of course, you probably want to want to take advantage of that individual games. Uh, before that time comes. Whatever it is you want to bet on, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Bet on college hoops till they cut down the nets or any other NFL futures. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NFL. All right, one last time. I'm going to wrap up this episode of Locked On Commanders with Josh Harris, the managing partner of the Washington Commanders. That's about the quarterback position, the difference in pressure between the quarterback and, say, an NBA point guard sitting in on quarterback meetings during the NFL scouting combine and his first real big hire of the organization that happened last season, Eugene Chen. So you've made some big decisions since you've been your GM coach. You got another one coming up with the quarterback. So how key, how pivotal is this decision for this franchise? We got, we, got, we got the number two pick in the draft, right? So that's obviously a very important uh, pick. Um, and we have, you know, many picks in the top 100. And, um, you know, we've, we've done it that way on purpose. So uh, it's important for us to have a very uh, strong draft, for sure. Before you guys hire. High draft picks in other sports, how does quarterback, in terms of uncertainty or pressure, compare to a basketball point guard or a hockey player or other things? Yeah, look, the number two pick is the number two pick. I mean, in any sport, right? That's an important pick. I mean, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a complicated question. It depend, it's, I think we can have a big impact if we make the right selection. How educational, how educational was it to sit in on the quarterback meetings at the, or the quarterback interviews at the combine? How, how educational was that for you? Um, look, I'd never been to a combine, right? So uh, we, we, um, you know, we got, you know, we, our group came uh, less than a year ago and you know, obviously, um, um, we have the number two pick, and um, I felt that it was important to just see how it operated. Um, I certainly 
I got a chance to witness uh, Dan and Adam and their staffs and how it worked, and it was highly educational for me. Um, and you know, I'm glad I did it. Great, thanks, Josh. Before you guys, before you hired Adam and Dan, you hired Jean Shen during the season. I'm just yeah. curious, how did you land on him, and why? I like, guess sort of even like, why did you do it then, and what is about that department that you want to <clears throat> get more? Yeah, so obviously, I'm always looking to build edges, uh, and you know, here you have um, um, 32, uh, 31 other owners that are uh, looking to win, right? And we all have a cap. We all spend the same amount of money, and so. Uh, obviously, it's about um, you know getting the right front office, the right coaching staff, uh, attracting the right players, signing the right free agent deals, and at the same time. So analytics is a tool that cr creates an edge. I mean, obviously, we've also you know brought in player health person that is a little different than what the the club was doing in the past in terms of taking a more holistic approach. And so, anytime I can, I see things that might give us an edge. You know, we try to take advantage of them. So the Eugene hire. Uh, was exactly that. And um, look, we um, were pretty steeped in the analytics community from some of our other experiences. He had a good reputation. Um, and we were able to, he had, he had been in the NFL, obviously, a series of programs that are very well thought of. And so that's why we did it. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Managing partner Josh Harris, conversation heavy. Fortunately, he was able to get the entire conversation. So again, I kind of organized it into topic sections, right? That's not the entire stream of the conversation, but insiders, you will be getting that Josh Harris video so you can watch it in one stream if you want to uh, as your as your time allows you to. Uh, in the meantime, if you got questions or comments, throw them in the YouTube comment section or text me directly as a Locked On Commanders Insider. Again, go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. we got a couple new ones even from the last episode, so I appreciate all of those who are coming through and trying that out. Don't forget to also check out Locked On Sports Today, the first ever 24-7 live streaming sports channel on YouTube. As always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day. Every day, every day, thanks for coming through like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.